it's Dan again, and today I'm coming to you from the beautiful Minnesota River Valley, uh, from Black Dog Park in particular, and recording this bit with my Zcam E2, uh, wearing my Zcam shirt, and I'm carrying the latest cam from Zcam, the Zcam E2C. So I guess it's a Zcam kind of day. Um, mostly I'm out here today to test the new E2C. Um, this is the little brother to the Zcam E2. Uh, this one can only shoot at 4K at up to 30 frames per second, where the E2 can shoot at up to 120 frames per second. This one has a smaller sensor, it's a 2.3x crop versus a 2x crop on the E2. And this one has an SD card slot door, where the E2 has a CFast 2 slot. Oh, and uh, one other thing, the biggest disappointment for, for me with this one is that it uses an LPE6 battery, where the E2 uses the Sony NPF type batteries. Uh, luckily for me, uh, the monitor I'll be using today has a power out and a dummy battery, so I'm just going to use that to power this. So I'll still be using an NPF to power this, just not plugged directly into the camera. Um, with this camera, uh, one of the big deals is that it can shoot ProRes. Uh, it's, I don't think, licensed for it yet, so uh, that'll be coming. I packed mine to turn it on, so I'll be shooting all or mostly ProRes with it today. Um, but the other thing is, since it's uh, the bit rate is not enough going to an SD card, uh, you have to record ProRes to uh, an SSD, which is why I have, you know, my uh, little Samsung SSD attached to the side of this. I think that's about it. You know, I'm not that interested in uh, rattling off all the specs for this camera. Uh, go to the Zcam group on Facebook and you can find all the details that you might want. Uh, the big thing is, this is a $799, super tiny, like you can see that the cage for the E2 doesn't even fit right on it because it's so small, but it's a $799, super tiny, ProRes camera. So I think that makes this maybe the smallest and uh, almost definitely the cheapest camera that you can get that will shoot uh, ProRes 10-bit 422. I actually think this can even do HQ. So anyway, uh, there's enough rambling about the camera. Let's take a walk around and shoot a little bit. See how this does. I almost forgot to say uh, I'm also testing the uh, you know human detect continuous autofocus on the E2. So hopefully I'm in focus as I'm talking to you. But also uh, one of my things for today with this little camera is that I'm only going to use lenses that I feel are an appropriate size for such a tiny camera. So the one on there right now is the biggest lens I'm going to use with it, which is the Olympus 12 to 40 millimeter f 2.8. This is the Olympus 75 millimeter f 1.8. It's the Olympus 12 millimeter f 2. I also have in my bag uh, the Olympus 45mm f1.8, the Olympus 14-42EZ uh, lens, which is weirdly tiny, the Olympus body cap lens, which is terrible, but incredibly small, and then finally, uh, to, you know, so it's not all Olympus, although it's kind of in the mood for Olympus today in case you couldn't tell. Uh, I also just recently printed, uh, with my 3D printer, this adapter to use an old 110mm uh, Voigtlander uh, f4.5, uh, what is this one? It's an Anastigmat Voigtar. Uh, so I made an EF mount for it, and right now it's uh, on my Metabones XL. So uh, I'm really excited to try this one. It's like a 1930s uncoated lens. I've been really getting into, uh, you know, printing lenses and lens adapters and that kind of thing again. So, um, you know, uh, expect some videos from me in the near future where I'm taking out some of my lenses, lens adapters, and even some of my homemade cameras and testing them out and talking about them. But for today, once again, Zcam E2C, let's give it a try. Alright, so this is an audio test. Um, this is not like the best audio test because the camera's only like a foot away from me right now. I'm using uh, the Olympus 12mm f2 lens, so it's like a 25mm lens on full frame. Um, but this is the way I do a lot of my videos, so it's a, a decent test for at least the way I shoot. Uh, I'm just using my little Rode Video Micro, uh, which was unusable in old versions of the Zcam firmware because uh, the levels were never high enough 
but supposedly they did a bunch of fixes in the latest uh, versions of the firmware uh, and the E2C uses basically the same firmware as the E2. Not exactly the same firmware but you know they're kind of in lockstep with the releases. I think like 90% of the code is supposed to be shared between them or something like that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I guess we'll see how this does. Uh, I should also mention uh, this camera, like the E2, has no built-in stabilization. So right now I'm just holding my camera at arm's length on a monopod and uh, that seems to work pretty well. Um, I don't know why more vloggers don't do it this way. Uh, it gets rid of a lot of the need for image stabilization. I guess maybe I'll find out someday. The sun went behind a cloud for a second, so I'm going to take this chance to uh, put on a, a lens for a laugh. Uh, this is the Olympus 15mm f8 body cap lens. Uh, I think somebody like DxO Mark reviewed this as the worst lens they'd ever seen. Uh, and they're not wrong. The quality on this lens is pretty bad. Uh, it's an f8 fixed aperture. Fixed aperture. You can't change the aperture. Uh, you can focus it, but it doesn't make that much difference as you focus it. But Anyway, um, it is not complete without its charms. Uh, this lens is also like the smallest lens you'll ever see. I'll take a couple of snapshots with my phone so you can see just how uh, tiny this looks on my camera. And uh, since the sun's behind a cloud, uh, there's little enough light that I can put this on and not have a whole bunch of things blown out. Uh, by the way, the camera's native ISO is 800 versus the E2's 500 and 2500. So um, it's about similar to like a a Sony uh, A7R Mark III or something like that. I think that's a native ISO of 800 as well in log mode. Anyway, um, you know, while I have this excellent potato of a lens on the camera, uh, I, th I think I'm also going to take a, a, a moment to mention uh, the last time I put up, uh, you know, like a walkthrough like this with uh, one of the Z Cam cameras, uh, a bunch of people were commenting, you know, that they thought I'm an amateur, uh, etc., etc., and you're right, I'm an amateur. Uh, I run a small YouTube channel and I make short films as a hobby, so uh, I am definitely not a professional colorist. Please do not judge this camera or any other camera uh, by my color grading skills, because yeah, I'm, I'm not a professional colorist, not by any means, once again. So um, yeah, and also, you know, uh, I'll probably put up some autofocus tests, or maybe I won't, I'm not sure, but if I do, uh, please Please do bear in mind, uh, these cameras were actually made to do autofocus. On my last video, people were commenting uh, the camera wasn't made to do autofocus, but the engineers from Zcam are continuously working on fixing the autofocus and making it better. Uh, it's contrast-based, so there's only so much they're going to be able to do in the end, but I think they've done a, an awfully good job for it being contrast-based. Uh, let's see, were there any other things I wanted to address? Oh yeah, one last thing to address uh, while I have this outstanding lens on the camera. Um, a couple of people have also commented that they think I'm sponsored by Zcam or that I'm a Zcam employee. I'm not. You know, if you think I am, ask my opinion of the E1 uh, and I'll give you an earful. But um, uh, they did give me this t-shirt. Uh, you know, I've been friendly with uh, the engineers and the CEO who are active in their Facebook group. You can be friendly with the engineers and CEO too if you want to just join the group and uh, start contributing. Um, Oh, and they gave me a hat, uh, a baseball cap as well. So, you know, that's my full disclosure. Uh, they've given me a, a t-shirt and a cap and uh, otherwise excellent customer service. Uh, they seem to have learned an awful lot since the abomination that was the E1. So anyway, uh, 
I think that's all of my ranting and complaining about people saying mean things to me on YouTube that I'm going to do for now. So, let's move on. <laughs> All right, well, that was a nice walk through the park. Uh, that's the first time I've really shot anything significant with this. You know, I've shot a couple things inside my house or in my front yard for like five seconds, but uh, this is my first time actually taking this out to use it. Uh, from what I can see on my external screen, the colors look great, uh, very much like my E2s, which I think will be uh, nice for trying to match the colors between the two in post. Um, so this camera is a light travel camera. Um, so far, I'm not totally convinced. Uh, just because with the uh, external SSD stuck on the side, it's basically the same size as my E2 in terms of total volume, but maybe. Um, and definitely though, as like a B camera next time I do a short film or something to my E2, uh, I'm really excited to use this for that. So um, yeah, I can't wait to get this footage home, put it on the computer and take a look at it. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching this short video today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, and found it useful or something. If you didn't, I'm sorry if you did. Uh, please feel free to hit like, subscribe, etc., etc., and uh, have a good day.